Just be glad for all you have that's in today. Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to Free, episode 4. So I've got, I've got to be honest here. When I first started this series, honestly, I didn't think I would like it. I'm being completely honest with you guys. When I first started this show, I honestly expected to drop this series. Within, like, maybe three, four episodes. Um... I expected it to be very generic, very simplistic, uh, I didn't expect to get much from the characters, and while I would still not say this is anywhere near the level of something like One Punch Man or Care on Tuesday, or other stuff like that that I've reacted to recently in terms of anime, it's good. I enjoy it. Um, the characters definitely have more to them than I expected. The comedy's actually pretty darn good. Um, and there's even some good relationships that are touched on. There's a few downsides to the series, of course, such as Reen's sudden, um, irritability kind of coming off as really jarring as a viewer. Um, it, it's kind of started to get explained a little bit, but it still comes across as very very, uh, not, well, okay, not really forced, I was gonna say very forced, not really forced, but more so it just, it feels like it was tacked on. Like it wasn't initially part of the plan and they kind of just changed it around. It, it doesn't feel natural. Let's put it that way. Um, so far, uh, my favorite characters are Miss A, the teacher, uh, Go, uh, Ring's younger sister, and, um, I cannot think of his name at the moment. I'm still getting used to a lot of their names. Um, the, um, the nerdy guy voiced by J. Michael Tatum. The one who's normally into track and field, but joined, uh, the swim club, um, after seeing, uh, the main, the main character's passion for swimming and stuff. Uh, although he can't swim, and he's going to be training under, uh, Nagisa. So that's going to be fun. Uh, those are my three favorite characters, and I'm kind of leaning towards um, J. Michael Tatum's character as my favorite. I just really like his personality. I love his character. He reminds me, as I mentioned last time, of Ida from My Hero Academia, which is a very good thing. I've always loved Ida. Um, so yeah, definitely a lot of positives with him. And I love his relationship with Nagisa. How Nagisa's like the, the the little cutesy one and everything, um, who's always full of positivity and energy, but he's also kind of the mentor figure to J. Michael Tatum's character at the moment. He's going to be teaching him how to swim, teaching him how to get into all of this, so he can contribute to the to the club, and I really like that. And, and there's definitely some fuel for a ship there as well. Uh, just the way they uh, portrayed the characters and how they uh, interact with each other, especially at the end of last episode, there's definitely some shipping fuel. Um, and one of you mentioned in the comments that apparently there's a lot of, uh, I guess, debates over ships within the free fandom, but that this one, Nagisa and... Uh, his name was like something like Ray or something like that. But that, that ship is actually a very common middle ground for almost everyone, that everyone seems to like it. Um, so, <laughs> it may be the safe ship, but I, I still think it's a cute idea. I, I, I still see the potential in that uh, pairing. But yeah, I really did not expect to like this as much as I do. And again, it's not like the best series. It does, again, have its uh, low points. But overall, I think it's successful. Overall, I think that it's good. And considering each season's only 12 episodes long, I don't think it's going to overstay its welcome and get too old or anything as well. I think it's going to, I think that's actually the perfect length for it. Um, so honestly, I, I think this is definitely one I'm going to be continuing all the way through. I mean, I don't know for sure anything can happen, but I, I really, at least as of where I'm at right now, 
definitely think that this series is something I'm going to enjoy. Um, but yeah. <laughs> um, right now, there's not like anything huge going on in terms of storyline. Um, it's basically they're building up things with the club right now. Because the first couple episodes was about them coming together and forming the club. Uh, then episode um, three had them getting the right amount of members they needed for a uh, uh, cross-school meet and everything. So now that they've got the right amount of members, they've got the they've got a manager and go, they've got a t faculty advisor with Miss A. Um, the club is up and running. They've cleaned out the pool. Um, everything seems to be ready to go. Now, obviously, we're not going to get into any big meets or any big events probably until the end of the season. That's what it's going to build towards. With 12 episodes, that also makes sense. Um, but they're definitely going to still be moving forward with things, I feel. So I think the next logical step, now that they've got all of this done, is to maybe have an episode with training uh, J. Uncle Tatum's character. I'm going to call him Ray for the moment until I find out what his actual name is, because I, I think it's something like Ray. Um, but it's, I, I think we should have an episode with Nagisa training Ray. Um, and of course, a couple other things too, and ow, what the hell? Something poked me on the side of the couch. <laughs> Um, but yeah, maybe have a couple other things too, of course, but I think uh, Nagisa training Ray is important. He needs to learn how to swim. He needs, and he needs to learn how to swim quickly. So I think that that would be the next logical step to go with. Um, and it would make sense. It would kind of pad things out in a way. Um, it, it, it's not filler by any means, but it would definitely pad the series out to where it needs to be. Um, allowing for some extra time, you know? And the episode, it, it doesn't like have to be a single day or anything. It could take place over even weeks of time, showing Nagisa continuously training him. Um, so they could definitely have a bit of a time skip here, even. Now, the one thing I do think, though, is that they, they're going to need to have some kind of activity as well in the meantime. Because the club, I don't think it's going to be allowed to uh, keep up and running unless there is legitimate activity going on, unless they're doing something. Because if they're just sitting on their asses, not really participating in any activities or events, then the school's not really going to see a point to giving them the room, giving them possible funding, all of that stuff. So yeah, they're still going to need to do stuff but i feel like ray is probably going to be out of that for now while he's uh learning how to swim and stuff it's mostly gonna probably be the other three um nagasi Na nagisa nagasi what the heck did i just say nagasi no nagisa uh i think his name is makoto and our main character it's going to be those three mostly at this point um but yeah definitely I, I definitely think Nagisa training Ray is going to be w the logical next step. Um, I don't know if that's actually where it's going to go, but I, <laughs> we'll have to see. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to continue on with this um, for today. And I think the one episode a week thing is going to work uh, as well, because with only 12 episodes, we don't want to rush it too much. Uh, we might do two episodes a week at some point, um, but I think for now, one episode is fine. Um, so yeah, with that being said, not much of anything else to discuss ahead of time, so let's get this going. When the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in... Everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. Okay, and we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So I was definitely wrong on the time period. I thought, like, the training, training ray was going to take weeks and stuff, but no, it was done in the course of a single week. 
which seems maybe a little rushed, honestly. Um, but at the same time, they had a deadline and they had to push it. And the way it was handled, I think, makes it okay. Um, the line at the end there, when he's talking about exactly how he how he figured out uh, the to do the butterfly stroke and everything, it's like I get exactly what he was saying. Like when he when he said, "I'm not free." This entire time, even with the different kinds of uh, strokes he was trying. He wasn't getting it because he kept comparing himself and trying to be like Haru. He he was inspired by Haru's uh, grace and beauty in the pool. He was inspired by how he moves when he swims and everything. And, and that's all well and good, but he was trying to be him and it was holding him back. When he finally let go of that, when he finally decided to do something different and, well, swim for him it clicked and he figured out specifically the perfect kind of stroke for him to do the butterfly stroke um now as i've said before with this i can't swim i actually have gross motor skills issues uh to where i legitimately cannot swim believe me i've tried for i tried for many years to learn how and I could, I, I cannot swim. I can float there. I don't like sink like he does, but I, I do not move. I, I do not go forward at all, unless I'm wearing flippers. Um, but at the same time, um, it's just like his issue was much different. Because again, when, when I was trying, it's again, it's, it's a physical issue that I have. With him, with Ray, it was more of a mental issue. Again, he was trying to be Haru, trying to imitate the free spirit that Haru had, um, which works great for Haru. But the thing is, it's not going to work for him. Even trying all these different strokes, he was still trying to be Haru. He was still trying to imitate that beauty and grace that he saw in him. Now, this episode also had all of the team trying to help train him. It wasn't just Nagisa, but Nagisa did definitely have a notable part as well. Um, I I'm kind of glad that the entire team did, though, even though I do ship Ray with Nagisa. Um, I, I think it actually makes more sense to have all of them try to train him. I, I think it just works a little better. And I think it just, like makes more sense from a narrative standpoint. Um, the little conversation we had between Haru and Reen, I felt was really telling. Like Reen, I mean, we've already started to get a view on why he's acting the way he is, why he's kind of a jackass nowadays. And we come to realize that, yeah, it's because of that one loss that he had w w during one of the times he came back for holidays, when he had that race with uh, Haru and he lost really badly <laughs> and it, it hurt his pride because he had been training with the best of the best in Australia to achieve his dream of competing in the Olympics and it hurt his pride to lose that badly because um, because he felt like all of his training and stuff had been for nothing and so even when he's now back for good and everything and he was training and he had that race with Haru, even though he won, he didn't count it as a win because he feels like with Haru kind of out of practice, it didn't mean as much. It doesn't, he wants Haru to be at his best because he wants to be able to beat him at his best. This is very common within rival stories in anime. Um, great example is Dragon Ball Z. Even though I'm not the biggest Dragon Ball Z fan, especially nowadays, um, Vegeta and Goku have the same kind of dynamic. Vegeta acknowledges that Goku is better than him, but he also desires to one day defeat him and become better. But he also wants Goku to be at his best because he feels like if he just defeats Goku when Goku's weakened or whatever, it's not going to mean as much. If he can defeat Goku when Goku is at his best, 
then it's going to matter. It's going to prove that he has surpassed him. That is what Vegeta wants. And it, I feel like they're going for the same kind of thing here. Um, and I, I also kind of think in a little bit of way that they, they're doing the same kind of thing with other uh, shows like My Hero Academia with uh, Izuku and Bakugo as well. Um, though not as much there because there's a lot more with Izuku and Bakugo than just that. But you get the idea. Um, but yeah, I really like this dynamic and I love how Reen was actually very vulnerable in this episode, how he actually showed some showed that vulnerability and felt more like you know like in depth than before. I think that it makes his character come across as well more understandable. Cuz before when he was just being a jackass, he was just a jackass. But now it actually feels like there is something to him, something that's being really built upon. And I really like that. Um, the the scene where they're uh, just trying out the different swimsuits in, in the in the sports shop and everything, and uh, and Go is oogling them was hilarious. I, I love the different kind of swimsuits and stuff. Um, and, and this episode was definitely a very high fan service episode as well. Um, not only just the you know shirtless guys in swimsuits and all that almost every episode has, or at least every episode so far, I think. Um, not only that, but there's also the entire aspect of <laughs> of Ray's original swimsuit, which was technically Nagusa's, um, the Speedo. Um, yeah, it, it, when he's stretching near the beginning of the episode and everything and he has his legs spread out and he's wearing the speedo and all it's like yeah definitely heavy fan service there <laughs> um i mean it's not like there was this like massive noticeable uh outlined bulge or anything but it was very noticeably uh focused on in the shots let's put it that way um yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, in all seriousness, like, I, I knew going into this there was going to be a lot of fan service like this. I, I expected it. And I've said in the past, like, even though I'm asexual, that doesn't actually mean I'm adverse to fan service or people's bodies or anything. It just means I don't desire to physically participate in sexual activity. I don't desire to have sex at all, in to any degree. <laughs> that doesn't mean I don't like seeing people's bodies. It doesn't mean that I don't acknowledge when people are beautiful or attractive physically. It just means that I don't want to engage in sex. But I acknowledge when people look hot, <laughs> you know? And yeah, there's a bit of this in this anime. There's a bit of that, for sure. Um, yeah, Ray, I think, is definitely my favorite character, though. Not just because of uh, the design, of his design and general attractiveness as a character. I just really love his personality. Because they could have easily made Ray cr come across as very high-strung. They could have very easily made him come across as the overly serious and just ridiculously uh calculated type of character who was just always like you know being so so super serious about everything and getting on everybody for being so fun loving and silly but no he he actually shows he has a bit of a comical side to him he's he's laid back to a degree as well y yes he does have some a little bit of high strung to him but he's not that bad with it um, he has a very likable personality. He connects well with all the different characters. He's, uh, he's just a really great character. I just really love his personality, uh, and, and just how he acts and interacts with everyone around him. He's, in, in that way, he is very much like Ida from My Hero. I'm gonna keep making that comparison, 
um, not just because the characters do bear a resemblance, um, but personality-wise even. Like, yes, Ida started off in, in My Hero as very high-strung, but once he became friends with Uraraka and Izuku, um, we started to see more of his real personality. And we saw that, yes, he's still a bit high-strung, but he also knows how to relax, he knows how to connect with people, and he's a really nice, kind, genuine person. Um, and admittedly, Ida is actually more high-strung than Rei. Uh, Rei is actually a lot more relaxed and a lot more fun-loving and uh, comical and everything. And that's nothing against Ida at all, I'm just saying. Um, Rei is definitely my favorite character. Go and Miss A are still up there. Um, Nagisa, I am actually liking a lot more than I initially did. Because at, at first, Nagisa did seem very much like just the cutesy character. You know, like Honey Senpai in, um, in Oron High School Host Club. The character who's just there to be cutesy and, uh, lovable like that. Um, and, and Nagisa seemed like that character at first, but I, I don't know. For some reason, I'm just really liking him the more this series goes on. Um, and yes, he is extremely cute, but uh, aside from that, he's just a really nice, likable character who's excessively supportive of his friends even when they fail, and he just, he, he's kind of, uh, not, how do I put it? He's the emotional compass behind the team. Like, all of them have their place, of course, but he's the emotional compass. He keeps everybody, he, he keeps their spirits lifted. He keeps them just happy and everything going well um makoto is definitely more of the uh definitely more of the um not intellectual side of things that's not the right way to put it um well while nakisa keeps everybody happy keeps everybody's spirits up makoto keeps everybody kind of uh not really focused per se but he keeps them grounded let's put it that way um, of course, um, Haru is the kind of inspiration. He, he inspires the rest of the team um, to continue on and to be the best they can be. Um, Go, of course, is the manager, and she's kind of literally support to the group, like literal support. She's helping them become better and move on and do what they need to do. She's managing their events and whatnot. Um, Miss A is mostly there just to advise the group. She is really standing up to her role as the faculty, faculty advisor. She's not getting involved in pretty much anything that they do, at least not as of yet. Um, I think she probably will get more involved as the series progresses. Um, but it's not like the teacher in, like, Kaon, for example. She had more of an active role, I feel, than uh, Miss A does here. Um, but yeah, and then, of course, Ray himself is the new member. He, he doesn't really have any strong role in the team yet. He's still getting into things. He's still connecting with everything else. Um... But if I had to say any kind of role I think he'll have, it's definitely going to be um, the role of getting everybody working, getting them into practice mode, getting them uh, focused on practicing and working hard and making sure everything goes right. That definitely seems much like uh, what he would try to do. So he's definitely going to, I think, be that kind of role with the team. And I like how each of the characters does have that kind of different dynamic. It really makes them pop out as a team. It makes them feel like they all have a purpose and all drive each other in different ways. That's actually very good, I feel, to the core dynamic of a group of characters in any show. All the characters have to add something to the team in order to make it feel fully fledged, to make it feel like it's fleshed out in a way that has depth, that has character in and of itself. So I, I, I really appreciate that. The story itself is like nothing special. Um, 
at least not yet. There's definitely going to be more to it, but at the moment, it's just kind of very standard. Um, the, the the instructor, their former swim instructor, who we've seen a couple times now, he is, I definitely think, is going to become a bigger deal later on. Um, he probably is going to work with the team and help them out and everything at some point. They're, I, I feel they're building to that. In the same way that Ray's first appearance was very kind of background-like, um, just kind of just as part of this montage of Nagisa trying to recruit people, I, I think that having the old swim coach come in time and time again is going to is actually going to be building to something later down the line uh, to when he does agree to work with them. So yeah, I, I definitely think that's going somewhere too. But overall, overall, I think that this um, episode was really great. It was really enjoyable, really fun, uh, definitely built upon the characters and the overall themes of the series, um, as well as really helped to further humanize uh, Reen as a character, making him seem like less of a generic asshole and more of like someone who's legitimately struggling with his own self uh identity really his own especially when it comes to confidence so yeah there's a lot going on here um and honestly i'm really enjoying this like i said in my pre-thoughts i really didn't think i was going to enjoy this series as much as i did and honestly i expected to drop it but this is proving me wrong every episode it's proving me wrong and getting just that much better and I love it when a show can do that. I love it when a show can prove me wrong. There have been many shows over the course of the years that have proven me wrong. Hell, Star vs. the Force of Evil, even if its uh, final season didn't turn out that well, overall, the series was still great. And when I first got into it, I didn't think it was going to be. I honestly expected it to be pretty meh. Um obviously my little pony i didn't expect to love as much as i do i didn't expect to be so heavy and deep into the fandom all of these years later when i first checked it out i honestly expected to dislike it not necessarily hate it but dislike it and it's like i love it when a show can surprise me because it means something when it does it means that it's doing something right in a way you wouldn't necessarily expect. It goes against the standard tropes and cliches of that kind of series, that kind of movie, game, etc., etc. Um, and Free, I definitely think, is so far. I definitely would say that it is uh, surprising me in all the right ways and going against what I expected from this kind of series. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this. Um, and I can't wait to see where it goes. Um, they're building up to their first event, which is definitely happen happening earlier than I expected. Um, they only had a week to get ready for, so I assume that it's going to be this next episode. Um, yeah, that's going to be interesting. But now that Ray has learned how to do the butterfly stroke, even if he's not the best at it yet, at least there's something there. And that's going to make this first event, um, well, that much more interesting. So yeah, I am definitely ready for more of Free in the future. Tell me in the comments below what you thought of this episode, and thank you so much for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time. And though you've come through many obstacles,